It's time for another midweek minute, so let's get it. So I'm reading in my Bible the other day, and I come across Matthew 25, the parable of the talents. Jesus is telling a story about this rich man, this master, who was going away for a long time, and he calls his three servants together, and he entrusts his property to them, his, his monies. To the first servant, he gives five talents. To the second, he gives two. And to the third, he only gives, he only gives one. So the master is away for a long time and he comes back to settle his accounts. He calls them together and the first servant comes to him. Master, you've given me five. Here's 10. He's doubled his money. The second servant comes in. Master, you've given me two. Here is two more, four talents. And of course, the master commends them both. Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And then there's the third servant. He comes in with the same talent that he was given, just one. He was afraid of the master, so he hid his talent. The master chides him, wicked and slothful servant. I gave you one talent. At least you could have put it in the bank so that it could have collected interest. Signs him to the place of outer darkness where there was weeping and gnashing of teeth. And so what exactly is a talent? In our modern day, we can say, is it an, uh, an endowment? individual endowment given to us from God? Is it skill? Is it ability? Is it opportunity? The answer is yes. It is all of those things. It is all of those tools, those resources that God has given to us to make this invisible kingdom visible. I think the Apostle Paul may have had this this parable in mind when he writes to the church at Corinth there, that first letter, chapter four and two, he says, regard us as servants of Christ, stewards of the mysteries of God. And then Paul says, moreover, it is required that steward, stewards be found trustworthy, or it is required of stewards to be found faithful. And here's the point. It's not really how much you've been given but the faithfulness to that which you have been given. And we look all throughout the pages of Scripture, Old and New, and New Testament, and we see all kinds of five-talent stewards in Scripture. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, David, Ruth, Esther, all of the prophets and the disciples post-Pentecost, and most namely the Apostle Paul. But there are lesser known stewards in scripture that we always tend to maybe look over and not see their contributions in building the kingdom of God. I think of Epaphras. The Apostle Paul talks about him in his letter to the church at Colossae there in chapter one. And then in that final chapter, he calls him a faithful minister, a servant of Jesus. And then there's a man by the name of Tychicus. Paul mentions him in chapter six of of Ephesians and Tychicus probably delivered the letter to the Ephesian church and Paul's letter to the church at Colossae as well. And his companion was a guy by the name of Onesimus. Onesimus was a runaway slave and Paul calls him a beloved brother. Onesimus ran, probably got to Rome. He was there with Paul, became a Christian. And so Paul writes a letter back to Philemon, who is Onesimus's master. And he says, he was useless to you, but now he's very useful to me. Receive him as you would receive me as a beloved brother. Epaphroditus, remember him in, in, in Philippians. He went to go visit the apostle Paul and minister to him. And, and he did it and got sick. So sick that Paul had to send him back to Philippi to, to be with the church. It, Phoebe, we think of Phoebe in Romans 16.1. Uh, she is a, a messenger of the church. It's estimated that maybe uh, Phoebe sent and carried Paul's letter to the church at Rome. And he, he tells them to receive her as you would receive a saint. And then there's a, a lady by the name of Nympha that Paul greets there in his, in his uh, signing off to the church at Colossae. And we find out that she was the host of a home church. All of these lesser known stewards that we are not too familiar with. And what did they have in common? That the gospel, the good news of the gospel was entrusted to them and they were faithful. And it's the exact same gospel that's been entrusted to us. And the requirement is the same. It's faithfulness.
And so number one, we know that the Lord requires us to be faithful in living out this gospel in our homes, in our covenant community, in our places of work, and wherever the Lord may take us. Live out the gospel. The second thing, it is required of us to faithfully share this gospel. Same places, in our home, in our covenant communities, in our places of work, and wherever the Lord will take us. And it doesn't matter. We can be either planters, gardeners, or harvesters. We all have a role in building this kingdom of God, and we must be faithful toward that end. So may God find us faithful toward that end, because the one who called us by his grace is indeed faithful, and he will be with us every step of the way. Bye-bye.